Hello and welcome to the very first Fabulous Food Finds tasting experience. This video, um, a live online tasting, uh, goes along with the tasting box that you have. So this is the March box and this is the very first one. Um, we had last night the very first like live tasting where we had about 20 people on the call. We had a couple of producers. Now this is a quick version for those of you who haven't got an hour and a half um, and maybe you don't even care what other people think of the products so this is me telling you about the lineup of what's in your box so um now it's time to open it um hopefully you have waited this long um so let me begin so my name is katie truss if we haven't met before um i live in north norfolk um with my partner jamie and my kids lottie and alfie um i've worked in the food industry um for just over 15 years um working mainly with the bbc good food show um but I also grew up in like pubs and restaurants. My parents and grandparents were all in the hospitality industry. So I've always been around food. Um, the reason why I started Fabulous Food Finds was um, through my job with the BBC Good Food Show, I would find like amazing new producers. Um, like I'd go to food festivals all over the UK markets. Like I've been to Italy to the Salone del Gusto, which is this amazing food fest, like a slow food festival. I've been to the Salon du Chocolat in Paris, which was amazing. So um, I found loads and loads of different products. Um, I also judge for like the great taste award so if you've ever seen like this um great taste stars um i'm one of their judges so um also judged for like the quality food awards and for bbc good food when they do their like taste tests um i did like the christmas ones and summer ones where we taste our way through mince pies and things so um you know i kind of know what to look for in a good product um now taste is really subjective so there might be something that i don't like like i really don't like goat's cheese i don't like mustard very much or horseradish like i keep trying to like it and some people just rave about it. i'm like i just don't like it so i do understand like taste is really subjective so everything that we all taste will taste different so um and i completely understand that so but i try with the boxes i'll try and choose products that i think will be um universally appealing to people and things that are just interesting things you might not think to taste um so yeah so where are we going to start we are going to start with the um this was a bonus round for our subscribers so i only had limited quantities of these but we had a rollo cookie bar and a millionaire's shortbread brownie and um, these were from the brownie box by emily um and uh, what attracted me to her was uh, she's just really interesting flavors um and exciting things she kind of said that she does like finds like dirty does dirty brownies and um if you check her out on like social media you'll see like things like a cookie burrito and um yeah but i it I hadn't I hadn't actually met Emily before, so um I wasn't sure how they were gonna be. And I know for some people the caramel on the brownie, the um it didn't it, it kind of seeped out a little bit. But um I had one guy say that the the cookie the cookie bar was like the roller cookie bar was the best thing they've had for a while. So I hope you enjoy them. Um I'll put the links to producers into the Facebook group. Um so where are we gonna start? So on the live call yesterday we had um the actual founder of So Good Kombucha, and her name is Leslie Slur So. Sorry, blah, blah, blah. Leslie So. Um, and if you, I'll, I'll put the link. I'll pull her a little bit out of the main thing. So if you want to listen to her um, speaking, you can. So this is So Good Kombucha. Now, um, I didn't think I was a fan of kombucha. It's basically a fermented tea, um, and um, sometimes they can be quite sour, quite sort of tangy and not to everyone's taste. Now, I hope you'll agree with this one that it's a really lovely, light, fizzy, and has got a little bit of a tang to it, but um, also just a really lovely flavour. So this is the Elderflower Mojito. Um, if you do want to find out more about this product, please do listen because um, Lindsay, um, Leslie tells you all about like why kombucha is good and answers a few questions there. Um, they also do a um, strawberry and basil flavour um, and a gingerless 
Gingerlicious, which if you like ginger, it's so good. Um, it's really good for you. It's low sugar, nice fizzy drink, um, completely vegan, um, natural and raw. So really good for your gut. So if you really need to improve your gut health, these are really good. But not just about health, really lovely tasting too. So I hope you like that one. Um, we're going to go to the pouch next. Um, now, this was another kind of bonus round. So this is from Vestal Vodka. Um, and this is another one where last night we had um, William Burrell um, come into the call and actually tell everyone about the product. And I really want you to watch that because he um, he's brilliant at telling us about the flavors. And um, so this is a black cherry vodka. Um, it's Polish vodka um, made from potatoes and it's steeped with ripe cherries. Um, and one of the things that he suggests we do with that is freeze it and then serve it as a shot, uh, like an after dinner shot with um, like um, dark chocolate sprinkled on top to make, uh, to make like a, a Black Forest kind of chocolate cherry pudding. Um, and also recommends putting it into an espresso martini, which sounds really amazing. Um, my partner Jamie absolutely fell in love with this last Christmas as well so I was really keen to put it in the box because I thought you'd like it um we drank a lot of it um, over Christmas um really nice with coke to make like a cherry coke kind of just an easy fun drink um and I tell you that so William Burrell who makes this is actually um he's got a bit of a rock and roll um family so um razor light's head lead singer is Johnny Burrell and that's his brother um and um I was a little bit of a Razor Light fan so um when I found out that William was Johnny Burrell's brother I was like oh my god it's amazing and um he actually brought Johnny to the Good Food Show London and I gave him like a tour of the show and because he's a real foodie as well so um it's pretty much a life highlight so uh <laughs> Thank you, uh, William, for this. Um, and again, watch the, I'll put the link to his his video in into the Facebook group so you can watch that as well. Cool. Um, so the next thing we're going to go to, um, you'll have to excuse me, show from these last night. So are these bars from the Savorists? Um, so completely by chance, these guys were on Dragon's Den this week. So if you want to find out a, a bit more about them and see them on TV, um, watch this week's episode. Um, it's um, These are snack bars started by a guy called um, blah, 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 Harry Turpin, and um, he was in musical theatre. So when you see him on Dragon's Den, you'll see he does a little bit of tap dance, which was quite fun. Um, so we're going to start with this one. So these are savoury snack bars. Um, I'll just pop that up to the screen. Um, this one's the Black Olive and Nori Seaweed. So have a taste of this. They are high fiber, low sugar. It's all vegan, plant based. And inside there, you'll get lots of different textures. So you've got seeds, you've got lentils, there's puffed rice um, and loads of flavor, like really great savory flavor. Um, I picked them because they, um, you know, actually you'll find the whole box is a little bit sweet this time. And I, I promise to aim for a bit more balance in the next one. Um, but I just, I thought they were really, interesting great flavors um black olive and nori seaweed you can really taste um loads of uh, like a really good umami hit like that savory hit um if you can't keep up with the tasting just pause this but i'm going to try and do this quickly so i don't take too much of your time um the next one is the sriracha chili um when i just checked to make sure i was pronouncing sriracha properly someone said apparently you should say it as sriracha but it sounds a bit weird, so I'm going with sriracha chili. Um, again, so I can have a quickly show you this one if you haven't got one there. But you've got pumpkin seeds, you've got puff rice, you've got bits of crunchy lentils. Um, the retail price on these is uh 185, but my mum reliably informed me that you can buy, I think, a box of 15 of these for 18 pounds um on Amazon. Um and they are just great to have, you know, like a nice savoury snack. So um, nice high protein, things like that. So interested to see what you think of those and watch the Dragon's Den as well. So going on, 
we will go to the Ten of Spice. So here, um, you have got a pin of cured sumac from Bowtree Farm. Now, Bowtree, um, they began their um, business of having a pepper farm in Cambodia in a region called Kampot, which is actually known for its pepper. So if you ever see Kampot pepper, um, it's basically like the champagne of peppers. So like amazing flavor. Um, they started with the pepper, then they started um, harvesting sea salt. Then they decided, right, people like us for our pepper. Let's start sourcing some of the most amazing spices from around the world. This is sumac. So if you Google sumac, it's this, we've actually got one at the end of my road here on the way down to the beach. Um, it's a beautiful tree and it's got these sort of like candle kind of shaped um, red velvety little bits on them. You'll recognize them and see them. You can say, ah, that's a sumac tree. Um, but basically if you open up this tin and have a taste, um, it's this gorgeous, burst of kind of citrusy flavor. Um, this one's cured, so it is cured with a little salt as well. Um, it's tart, it's tangy, it's really sweet and really can be used in place of citrus when you need like a, that kind of like tangy, tangy hit. So um, uh, uh, there's a lots of recipes of otolenghi, um, Nigel has been using sumac, um, we were saying, you know, you could sprinkle it onto fish, you could put it on a piece of chicken, um, loads of recipes, but I'll put some recipes into the Facebook group. Um, something I tried last year was a, it, it was, um, it must've been sort of September, October because plums were in season. We did sausages, plums, red onion, sumac, and um, lots of like fresh uh, parsley and some pomegranate molasses. And that was a really gorgeous sticky dish. So that's one to try. And that's your cured sumac. So have a taste of that. It's beautiful, bright red. Um, cool, so that's our sumac. Um, and this is, that was from Turkey. Um, bra, bra, bra. Number six, um, you'll wanna put your kettle on and have a try of ace tea so this is their breakfast marmalade tea and i was really like i love the packaging anyway but i just like i love black tea so my absolute favorite is like a yorkshire not the yorkshire girl just the normal yorkshire tea a really strong only a tiny bit of milk um so i like a black tea now this is kind of like a variant on that so i thought i'd really like that um in their tasting notes they say it's a thick cup and substantial orange marmalade breakfast tea best served with a morning broad sheet and a slice of toast and i think that's just perfect um now they're in a biodegradable um stocking um they call them stockings like tea bags um so you don't need to worry about any plastics in there um i think after the call yesterday we found that it probably needs a little bit more brewing um it says three to five minutes but leave it a little bit longer um the guys at ace tea their whole idea is like their untraditional flavors um and also you can you can drink them hot um some of us liked it with milk some of us didn't um but also cold and to use them once it's cold in cocktails i thought actually with gin this would be really nice with gin um there's a company called novel tea and they make an um a earl grey um gin earl grey tea gin and uh, with gin um and i thought that'd be a really similar kind of cocktail so a nice long um gin and cold tea basically orange tea so give that a go let me know what you think that's the ace tea and breakfast marmalade tea um cool where are we going next right time to have a little chocolate tasting so um what we'll do first so we have these two chocolates um fire tree are um quite a new company and they um the whole thing that they do it's all vegan so there's no dairy in there there's no nuts um and they source all of their chocolate from um volcanic islands so um they find that you know the volcanic soil is really fertile and gives a really different kind of like flavor profile to the chocolate beans. Um, I'm gonna give you a quick, before we have a taste, a quick um, kind of guide to tasting chocolate. So we use all of our senses. So first of all, have a look at the chocolate. Um, I'm afraid my child's uh, had a little bite out of this one this morning. Um, but we have a look at it and um, a shine is always a good quality on this. This one's been touched a little bit. Um, and so the shinier, the better really with dark chocolate. Um, 
uh, if you listen, a snap, um, a, the brighter the snap basically signifies the better chocolate. So let's have a listen. Yes, a little click. Um, so again, it's really good quality. I don't think you can imagine like breaking a piece of dairy milk and it making that kind of sound. Um, so that's a really good sign. Um, the, in terms of its touch, um, when they're made with cocoa butter rather than like other vegetable fats, they'll melt at room temperature. So you'll find it kind of like melting in your hand. Um, and let's, before we taste, we want to have a smell. So if you wave it in front of your nose, you've got a really lovely cocoa kind of smell there. Um, and it, it will just help you. It, it, once you've tasted it, you won't be able to go back to that kind of smell. So always good to have a little smell first. And then, um, uh, there's a huge amount of complex flavours in chocolates. It's actually the most um, flavour complex food in the world. Um, so almost like wine that you've got different places that the that like the varieties grow, and it can really the soil that they're grown in, um, which we kind of refer it to the terroir, um, which I sound like an idiot saying, but it's basically the the earth from which it's grown um, and can affect how things change so when we're going to talk about the tasting notes that we're picking up on this these chocolates don't have anything else other than you know um cocoa um they have some sugar in there and um cocoa butter pretty much so there's no added flavors um so what you want to do is put your we'll, we'll slow down the process of tasting it so if you pop the chocolate into your mouth and then let it melt slowly and keep it there as long as possible so let um and the other thing to do is if you try blocking your ears and your eyes and then just really kind of like concentrate on the on the flavors that you're getting from these chocolates so if we start with the Solomon Islands Guadalcanal, Guadalcanal, I had to Google how to pronounce this, um, it's a 69% cocoa. So I didn't want to go too strong. They actually do 100% cocoa, which, I, you know, I wanted us to enjoy it. So um, if you have a little taste of that one, um, and I love the box, I love how the packaging actually kind of like hints at the tasting notes as well. So with this one, you might be getting red fruit, like red currants, um, berries and citrus and plum. I don't know if you're getting that. Um, a pour, please pause this if you want to just have another like a, a moment to, to relax. And the best way, the best thing to drink between tasting chocolates is actually warm water. Um, if you have cold water, it kind of it does refresh you, but um, the warm water actually sort of like melts away uh, the chocolate and refreshes your palate. And so the next one is the Philippines Mindano Island. Um, it's probably I said it like an Italian. Sorry. Um, and this is 73% cocoa. Um, and with this one, you should be getting citrus, honey, and caramel, a little bit more mellow, warmer. Cool, anyway, I hope you like that one. So after the chocolate, we are going on to, oh, also, if you're really into chocolate, have a look at Fire Tree. They are, their ethics are brilliant. You know, they really look after their, their growers. So a really good company to support and there's lots of other bars that you can buy um and i just love that these little they're they're two pounds fifty each they're quite small bars but at least you get to try lots of different flavors um cool right so number seven we are going on to this little jar of green um which is born of foods and this is a pistachio butter um so this one did actually divide a few of us um yesterday um a warning it doesn't have any ad anything added so this is pure pistachio so um one way i've been eating this is like on a rice cracker with a bit of salt um i love salted pistachios um but one of the things that we could do with it put it on to have a little taste um and you should get this instant hit of like the pistachio. Um, you might need a drink to have have with it because it can be quite cloying. Um, 
but some th some of the things we, we we suggested doing was put it into some porridge, um, maybe try it swirling it into like a brownie, a cheesecake, that kind of thing. Um, they even say put it into a smoothie as well, just for that sort of like nut the nut the goodness of the nuts and that pistachio flavour. Um, I'll be putting a few recipe ideas into the Facebook group, but if you have any ideas as well, please share them um, and let us know what you think. I mean, this one um, it's got a I was really, I mean, they're, they're, it's not cheap. So it's eight pounds fifty um, is the the retail value of this one. Um, so I mean, it's really intense, high quality pistachios. But um, something I thought you might be nice to introduce you to, and I'm really keen to find out what people do with it. So the next one is um, Joe and Seth's. So popcorn. If you haven't met these guys before, you probably have. I mean, they they. They've been around since 2010 and they've grown massively. Um, but I met them back in 2010 when they first launched and they came to the BBC Good Food Show with these huge tubs of popcorn and they were getting these pouches and they're actually filling the pouches at the show because they just couldn't keep up with demand. Um, so Joe is the... Um, you know, he was the founder and then he worked with his son, Adam, as well. And these are one, this is one of the original flavours. Now, it's not something you might have had it before. Um, it's been around for a long time. They have loads of different flavour popcorns, but I just love this one. And this is the one that gave kind of Joe the, the reputation for being the Willy Wonka of popcorn. Um, so if you put one of these um, into your mouth, um, first of all, you'll get the smooth caramel and then you'll get the chilli. Um, uh well actually they've said followed by the hot pepper i get chili first um and then to finish you'll get a spicy chili kick and it takes you on that journey of like about 10 seconds of different flavors developing i i, I love it so much i think that that whole savory unexpected heat um along with the sweet is is gorgeous um and so the other flavor that i have here is um uh, gin and tonic I thought I was just interested in it really like oh gin and tonic popcorn um again this one kind of this one divided opinion a little bit like when you've got this ex expectation of a lovely refreshing gin and tonic um some people kind of didn't expect like the sweet with the gin and tonic um but have a little taste of this one and see you think see what you think um just enjoy it it's excellent quality popcorn um as i said they've got loads of different flavors so have a look on their website and see what you think um that has brought us to the end of all the products so um i hope you've enjoyed this tasting um if you've got any questions put them into the facebook group or email me um this was the first ever tasting box um from fabulous food finds the idea is is that i'll do it every three months so if you aren't a subscriber um you can just book um order for the next one um as i say every three months 39.95 and um I'll, my aim so there's loads of companies that are kind of saying to me oh you know I'd love to be in my box in your box um in your tasting box and I um you know obviously I'm qualifying everyone making sure like it's the right product and a really nice mix of sweet and savory things you can eat straight away things you can drink um things you can cook with so I'm really excited for the next box and I really think that we'll um I'll be able to stuff a few more things in there as well now that I've got all my packaging issues sorted um but thank you so much for coming to this first tasting again any questions um just let me know and uh, I hope you've enjoyed it and thank you so much bye-bye